They just really get you with that last little note. That right? Ting. Ting. <clears throat> All right. Mainly Stupid Podcast, episode eight, I think, or seven. I think it's seven. Seven. Was it last week six? No, nope, last week was seven. All right. Episode eight. I episode eight. Correctly. We fucking nailed it. Season three. Season three. Tuesday. A special Tuesday edition. We are here live. Late. My Late. apologies. Yeah, I got the Facebook. I got caught up in the Facebook marketplace game, the addictions. Uh, I, that's one thing I've never really. I look at Facebook Marketplace a lot, but I've never actually bought anything on Facebook oh, Marketplace. I don't know if I haven't. I've fucking probably bought more stuff from Facebook Marketplace in the last year than I have a store. <laughs> <laughs> and it's bad now because I looked at one fly rod. Now I just have fly rod. There's a yeah. There's a Fenwick for sale in New York for. 160 bucks that I'm like uh, might just have to go buy see, it. See what I don't like about Facebook Marketplace as of late is it shows you shit that is like ships to you. Mm, you gotta you gotta get into the settings. You gotta go deep. You gotta really weed it out. You gotta get what you're looking for. I guess I need to do that because like I like punched in waiting boots one day. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, you can get these from fucking back country. You yeah. Go to their website and you're like, no. Yeah. I'm on Facebook Marketplace because I want to buy it secondhand from someone within 100 miles for $40 for Sims Freestone waiting boots. Yeah. Click on it. It's like ships to you for $72. Yeah. No, I don't want that. Just because the price is $40 yeah. and then you're going to hit me for $70 on shipping, that doesn't mean it's a deal. Yeah. So, what are we? What have we done? So we went fishing. We went fishing last week. Didn't didn't catch shit. Didn't catch shit. I caught. Uh, I think I'm the leader in the clubhouse for the smallest fish caught. I didn't even take a picture of it, but <clears throat> it fit in the palm of my hand, just the palm area. I hooked it on a nice renegade. That was that creek chub you're talking about? Beautiful little creek chub. I think I might be the leader in the clubhouse for smallest fish of the year. Yeah. And the most fish. Yeah. I got about three. No, yeah, that brought my total up to five. Five, <laughs> five fish for the year. Six, six fish for the year. Not including ice. What I'm like, open. the number I'm looking at this year is not necessarily fish. I decided this the other day. But it's amount of times I've gone for sure. days on the water. Days on the water. It doesn't matter if you fished for five hours or fifteen minutes. Do we need a Do we need a whiteboard? Up I here? think that that's not a bad idea. So speak. Well, we'll stay on topic, sort of, right now. I'm fucking ready to go. <laughs> this whole I, so this bitch. I talked to her early. And then, like, I was one of the first ones to message her. And so, thankfully, she held it for me, which I was yeah. grateful of. Because she was like, oh, priority is going to be taking the first person that can show up. And I'm like, well, if you're telling me I need help, i got to find help. But I will definitely give you $100, no questions asked. Two armoires or two, like, fucking cabinet things. Sounds great. Um, but so then I get ready to go over there. And I left my house without having an address. Normally not something I like to do because then I end up in I'm standing in Greenland like waiting. Yeah. And so I went into tractor supply, which was a good thing because I had to get some straps and they had some nice reflective straps, 12 footers, ratchet straps on sale for fucking 10 bucks. Right. Yeah, four pack. I was like, those are perfect. Those can get fucking lost anytime, and I really won't care anymore. Um also, side note, it's amazing to me that my cousin still does not know how to fucking operate a goddamn ratchet strap. You'd think four years of engineering school, you'd be able to fucking master a fucking ratchet strap. Nope, not him. Grafted it with you? Yeah. No, he didn't go with yeah. me, but he just ratchet straps and him have a fucking hate hate relationship. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so I went over there. 
got that. And then she finally texts me back. And then she's like, oh, well, I got to clean it out. And I'm like, okay. why is it even posted if it's not ready to go? Seriously. But got over there, got it loaded, got back home, picked the perfect rainy day. Rain really picked up right when we got there, too. It was yeah. nice. Timing couldn't have been better. And uh, yeah, I just dropped them in my shop. So now they're going to be in my way. And I'm going to get pissed off probably the next three days at it. But Invert them. Future Garrett is going to be mad at current state Garrett, <laughs> and we're just completely okay with that. <laughs> Future Garrett really does not like past Garrett. Is a yeah common common denominator. Yeah, yeah. So we got out fishing a couple times last week. Actually, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, you went Saturday. I didn't get to go Saturday. Yeah, but I, I went. For I a- fished. I think I fished every night after work last week. That's good. Yeah. So I'm, my days on the water are, are getting up. Creeping up there. Yeah. You hit the doubles yet? You got to be close. Yeah, I think I'm at 10 at least. Yeah. So Saturday I got up and left. I left about six. I left later than I wanted to. But I forget what we did Friday. I was tired Friday. What did I do? I don't know what I did. I can't remember. Did you have a birthday party or something? No, that was last weekend. What the fuck did I do? I don't know. No idea what I did on Friday. I don't know. I was tired, though. And so I got up a little later than I anticipated. Still was on the road for sunrise fish. Yeah. Um, But got up for some Scott. Tried the new waders, stayed drying them. That's important. They're comfy. I actually, I'm, I'm not upset. Like, they could leak next time, and I really wouldn't be that mad. My size in those, no longer available on Amazon. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I waited too friggin' long, like I always do. Not my fault. It's not, not their fault, obviously. No, but they'll come back available soon. At some point they are uh, something different. They're not bad. The boots are the booties are a little tighter, and I forget how cold waders are that are not insulated. Yeah, so used to neoprene. It, it was well chilly. Yeah, we had to get a double layer next time. Yeah, I just threw on sweatpants underneath, and that was not enough. Did find a new use for so. You know how I am. I like to have something for each event. Uh-huh. I don't like to cross pollinate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Leah bought me a pair of Crocs that have holes in them, which are no good for duck hunting season because normally it's either raining or snowing. Yeah. And holes in Crocs is just dumb. I know that's the whole point, but when you have a lined Croc, you shouldn't have holes in it. That's just, I mean, design 101, right? Really. Yeah. I shouldn't have to do this for you, Crocs. You had a great thing, then you fucked it up. Like everybody, but uh, so I've decided that my holy lined crocs are going to be my fishing crocs. So well, there you go, because I, I did wear my duck hunting crocs, but they're going into waders, so it was kind of yeah okay. Are those breathable too? <clears throat> um, I don't know. I don't think so, really, because they definitely like you get some air pockets in them. Yeah, like. You blow up pretty good. <laughs> um, but so I went up, I fished, didn't see a fucking thing. Came down, I fished, I sat down, just kind of hung out on the like it was kind of nice not to have like a schedule. Yeah. Cause like I literally just like I knew I needed to put a new leader on. So I just like literally sat down at the picnic table. Hung out, tied a new leader on, just watched the water, like hung out, talked to a couple guys that were there. <clears throat> and one of the guys that had gone all the way up when I was up there, he and I were fishing, like we were kind of like hopping back and forth, like leapfrogging each other. And neither of us caught a fucking thing. And that's when I was like, okay, there's not a fucking thing up here. Yeah, at least when, when people, when that is happening to you as well. Yeah. I'm not okay when someone else catches a fish. Early. Yeah, it really bothers me. Like that that day that I caught those four trout, there was an old man that was there that was fucking killing it, and I'm fucking not, and I'm <laughs> not happy. Um, but then 
I made a fatal flaw. There's a YouTube video on our YouTube channel kind of recapping the day a little bit. But uh, so two things to take out of this. Waiting belts are a very good idea to wear. Did wear that. I normally don't wear one duck hunting. <clears throat> Probably saved me. Well, from at least getting very wet. Did wear a waiting belt. And then CNF Designs, greatest fly box ever designed. Uh, they do float full of water enclosed. Because I dropped my nymph box. That's how desperate it was. I was tying on fucking nymph droppers. <laughs> we were fucking, we were scratching the bottom of the barrel, fucking trying to catch a goddamn fish. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, I dropped, dropped my box, hit the water. And like, I'm so used to, I think I would, I don't normally fish in the middle of the river. I was yeah. standing in the middle of the river, dropped that box and kind of just was like, oh shit. And like wanted to make sure what I was holding in my hand was like secure. And then like, I looked down, I'm like, oh, fuck, that thing's fucking going down the river. So then it, I hopped off the rock. That's when I fell. I fell when I jumped off of what I was standing on. And I fell onto my back, got back up, got a little wet, and then just started fucking hoofing it, trying to catch running water. <clears throat> and uh, netted it like a pro after about 80 yards and completely gassed. I could have used the fucking football sideline fucking oxygen tank. Like, now do you think this was a little bit of like karma coming back for us not necessarily being the most supportive for a homeboy that fell in the water up there? Ah, uh, no, because I wouldn't have wanted someone to talk to me either. Yeah. Like, we were supportive in the fact we watched him. And we wanted, we made sure, we made sure you, yeah. I was going to go down. If he was struggling to get up, I would have gone down. But if you're in that, like, I didn't want anyone to come over. I would have, if someone had come over, I mean, that's how I am. I would have made fun of myself. If I'm not letting anyone else get shots off, I yeah. will take all the shots at myself first. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, it was, uh, oh, got it. Um, it was not the greatest uh, performance of athletic ability. Yeah. Although I did get it. I would have been very unhappy if I had not gotten it. As much as I hate nymphing, I would have been really pissed to lose an entire box of nymphs. That's, just, that's a lot of money. But there's definitely some people downstream of me that definitely saw it happen. And they did not say a word. Yeah. I guess that's kind of an unwritten code. Make sure you're not dead. Yeah. Don't say anything. And then I went down, fished some more. Didn't catch a fucking thing. Did find I I really like it down where where I ended up, but no fish down there. Threw fucking everything. I fucking tied so many fucking flies on that day. <laughs> and then I mean, we're just gonna get into fucking people being assholes. Someone decided to stop at a green light, and I almost fucking rear-ended them, which would have been awesome because I had two fly rods fucking laid out on the fucking front of the jeep. And I would have fucking broken everything. But yeah. Sanford drivers, you know. Oh, yeah. Route four, fucking dead stop at a fucking green light. And then looked at me like I'm the asshole when I fucking lay on the fucking horn. And it caused a break caliper to lock up on the Jeep, which has since been remedied, but it weren't good. <laughs> and then Sunday, left early. Yeah, went down to the fly fishing show. Yeah, got there a little. Before we get into the show, I would like first of all before we even get to what you're going into. Yeah, I would like to say the driving. There probably wasn't once that you really thought you were going to die. No, the drive down was very yeah. calm. Like nobody on the road. There was a couple times on the way back. I was like, he's getting awfully fucking close to that car. I mean, I don't know how you got but, you got a draft, you know. <laughs> but I didn't say anything. No, um, there was more traffic coming on. But yeah, there but we got go. we got there a little early, and so we went to Starbucks. I had to destroy their bathroom, which I give their bathrooms like an eight and a half out of ten. It's the size of this room. Yeah, I give it a twelve on spaciousness. Yeah, but as far as like. Comfortability, absolutely. Feel bad for 
old boy that was going in there after me. Hey. But it's what it is. It's the dicey roll when you choose a public bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So but we got coffee and we're sitting there drinking it. Um, the Army West Point girls softball team was there. They looked like they could crush our heads. Yeah. Very easily. Uh, Those are deadly lesbians. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Like these are the chicks that are crushing watermelons in between their legs on <clears throat> TikTok. It was definitely one of those times where I wanted to like go into the Kent Murphy, but it, that was not like mm-hmm. if it was a regular college, might have said something because like a couple of them were like chatty, <clears throat> but the yeah. rest of them like there was one girl that walked in and I was like, she looked mad. That yeah, that brunette that yeah. just sat there. She just. Mm. <laughs> Fucking she wanted her raspberry square and her fucking starburst refresher or whatever yeah. it is. Quick. But I noticed something when mm. we were sitting there. The screen for the drive through The scoreboard. The, yes, we'll call it the scoreboard. <laughs> the Starbucks scoreboard. Which times the first, the two orders that are waiting. So I assume it's the one I know, it's the first two orders, I guess. Well, it's, yeah, it's going to be the car at the window, yeah. how long they've been waiting, and then the car behind them. Uh, and how many cars they've served that per hour. hour, which we got to witness. The, we were there like the last part of the hour. And their efficiency. Their efficiency was strong. Folks, I think I found a reason for me to go to, Star- <laughs> to, go to Starbucks because I was intrigued. And I was coaching them up. I was trying to anyway. And I mean, they, I, they've they got it figured out because it's not every car is the same. So it's definitely mm. order-based. So they factor in how much time things are going to take. Yeah. But in general, they're looking to get you out of there in under a minute. And that's from the time you order to, to the, the time, time you get your get food. Your food. 90, it's like 90 seconds was the longest we saw. Yeah. I mean, they made it up to two minutes and something at one point. And that thing was flashing red. Yeah. And efficiency was down. Yeah. And all I could think about is there's some fucking suit in an office somewhere watching this screen going, these people need to pick it up. And all I could think about was tell that guy to fuck right off. He's, he's not, out in the, not out in the trenches with these people. Have we brought this idea to Elliot Small Engine for your efficiency with customers? Not going to happen. I would, I would, I'm pretty efficient. I would bring donuts and coffee and just sit at the counter. I would be <laughs> done with you in about five minutes. I would ask you to leave. Hey, uh, you, this lady's been here for fucking seven minutes. <laughs> I don't care that you're trying to sell $30,000 worth of lawn equipment to this guy. <laughs> that lady right there doing $6 in bird seed. Yeah. She's got shit to do. She's got shit to do. You're going to make Dolores wait for her dry cleaning. <laughs> but it's like, what kind of job? Like, can you imagine that anywhere else in like a corporate setting or yeah. like even a mom and pop setting? Like, Rick's. Yeah, that order's been up there for fucking 46 minutes in the middle of summer on fucking July 4th weekend. Think about it in Rick's, like old, old days. Rick's. Yeah. Old Rick's. Yeah. Carry bad bones <laughs> would tell you to, she would take off your hat and tell you to shit in it. Well, imagine if each table had their own fucking timer. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and then he gets, oh, God, the efficiency levels would be down. Now, I do like, at like an Applebee's, I don't know if they still have them, but pre pin I haven't been to an Applebee's since before the pandemic. But pre-pandemic, they had the little screens on the table. They still do. And you could order drinks again. Yeah. That's nice. And you could pay right, right there. And just fucking get That out seems impersonable, though. Like, yeah. I like, I like, I like to, to have, get the check. I like to have the last interaction with the server. Especially if, if they're bad, though. Yeah. You can just yeah. beat feet. Don't even fucking have someone else bring it to me. Yeah. But yeah, so we had a we had a good good laugh at the uh, the poor Starbucks employees that were sitting there trying to. And you stay got a little green. upset right before we got to Starbucks because. Oh yeah, I, my day was ruined when we pulled in. And Garrett's like, "Would you go to Chick Fil A?" I'm like Garrett, it's Sunday, and I heard more fucking curse words come out of your mouth. Yeah, 
You, 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 they're, luck, they're lucky God took the day off. <laughs> <laughs> so, no Chick-fil-A. No Chick-fil-A. And it was right there. It was right next to Starbucks. I was so excited. I was like, oh, fuck. Because I looked on the map, like, what was coming up just on Google Maps or whatever, and it was like, oh, yeah, there's a Starbucks right here. I was like, perfect. And the next door is Chick-fil-A. And I was excited. And then quickly very depressed. Yeah. Came out of it, though, with my venti caramel <laughs> iced macchiato quad upside down. I didn't even order. No. I just had Garrett get it for yeah. me. <laughs> He's like, what do you want? I was like, I don't know that thing you got me once. Just give me a coffee, something. And I came out just sitting on the table. Perfect. And then, so we went to the show. We went, went and wandered around the show. <clears throat> HMH Vices, great showing. Yeah. A couple of good, awesome tires there. Yeah, that's cool. They had a good setup. The Bears Den really mailed it in, just from my past experience. Yeah. Now, so this, and it's not their fault. They're fucking busy right now. Like, those guys are fucking yeah. wide open with their store. This show is normally supposed to be the end of January. Due to COVID, they rescheduled this one. This was the only one they rescheduled. And all the other ones, like, because I was on, I think I was on their Instagram, because it's it's like a circuit that the fly yeah. fishing show is. There's like five or six locations. Yeah. Every other location, they had pictures of like loaded with people, like shoulder to shoulder, like insane amounts of people. And then even everyone there was like, yeah, this was not good. You don't have a fly fishing show in this last week of fucking April. Yeah. And expect a ton of people to show up, especially like vendors. Like you're getting ready for the season. If you're yeah. a guide, you're getting ready. Your shops are getting ready. Your shops are stocked. You don't want to break down stuff and take it down there. And oh, seemed like the main fly fish guys, though. The main main fly company was they were doing good. They had yeah. a lot of interest. They'd yeah, it's good to talk to those guys and get a plan together for my rod. <clears throat> Think one day, finally, maybe, eventually, Dan will come on. Prick. <laughs> it would be cool to talk to Jeff, too. I, I, it would be cool just to go up there and do it there. Yeah, I'd love, to, yeah I'd love to get them on. Just bring up, like, a 12-pack and just sit down and crank beers and yeah. hang out. Yeah, I think that'd be a cool, cool showing. Um, but otherwise, there was, I mean, really not that many vendors. Um I bought a shirt from one guy only because they're $20 UP, UF yeah. fucking sun shirts, which I'm going to buy one everywhere I go. Um, <clears throat> and then I think the shining moment was learning about the fly fishing museum yeah. in Manchester, Vermont. Like that's, I wouldn't hate to do like a late August, early September trip yeah. out to Manchester. But there's so there's a fly fishing history museum. Yes, the national national fly fishing museum or yeah. something. Um, and those guys were awesome to de- talk to. They they were they were really was, yeah super cool. knowledgeable, cool stuff. And then he told us about one that's in Rangeley. Yeah, the, the Ra- Rangeley has a museum up there for like the history, of, like the North Main Woods and yeah. stuff up there. I'd like to go to that. I've been yeah. Read. It's never open when I'm up there. Yeah. I'm only out there for bird hunting, so. Yeah. Um, and then I did buy a new reel, which I fished it yesterday. And I love it. It's a TFO, their three-weight reel. Couldn't pass up the price. Then went to Eldridge on the way home and spent more money. On yeah, I think we spent more money. I spent more money at Eldridge than I did at the show. Yeah. Maybe not Same. including fuel, but I uh, I bought that new line. Put the I haven't cast it yet, but looks good. Yeah, I fit. I fished yesterday when I caught that little chub. And I also realized, like I don't know, like I taught my dad how to fly fish. I taught my mom sort of the basics of it, but I I don't know if I just I don't know what where my brain was yesterday or if I just don't have it anymore to teach someone like if it's just become like too far gone yeah you know when like you learn to do something early in life and then you try and explain it like yeah a ton of years later like 
I can't teach someone how to play golf. I just know how to play golf. Like that kind of <clears throat> is kind of where I'm at with like fly fishing. It's like, yeah, I can't explain to you in words what I do. Just watch what I do and do exactly what I do. That's all I can tell you. Like, um, yeah, I mean, overall, decent show. I mean, I'm glad I went. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't a waste of time, I wouldn't say at all. But I think my favorite part of the day was at the fly shop, shooting the shit with Jim yeah, and Aaron. Ran into Aaron after his, <laughs> he had a nice little trip down to the Catskills. Catskills of New York. But it was cool to just talk shop with those guys and hang out in the shop and look at shit. So I don't know if you noticed this or if it's just me having like. Did you see how fast Jim moved when I showed him that fly? Yeah. I've never seen Jim move that. I've, he was excited. He was. And I was like, this is like, I enjoy that type of Jim. Like, like you showed him the fly. He's <clears> like, that's a harem. Yeah. Immediately. And he's like, I have one right here, but I can't get them anymore. And I'm like, okay, well, do I perfect this? And then I just take them in and be like, hey, yeah. you want these? Like, I literally donate those to Like, for everything that shop's giving me, mm. fucking maybe give me a little break. Give me a store credit. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. But. Yeah, it was cool to cool to see Jim. Yeah, cool to see Aaron. And spend money. And it's always fun to spend money. I got a question. You know how, like, when you put a new fly light on, yeah. it gets that memory in it. Yeah. How the hell do you get that out of it? Like a new leader or a new fly line? New fly line. Just fish it. Just fish it. Yeah. Because it'll come out. Like, because I was noticing that a little bit yesterday, but. Really, that reel that reel lays out pretty good once you fish it. Like once it straightens yeah. out, once you're like casting it, it'll come out. But I don't know. It was a good good weekend. Yeah. I went after I got back and went home for a while. I took Mandy. We went fishing. <clears throat> I went to Boyle Road just to and the water looked super nice. Like the sun was hitting it, there was bugs coming off. I couldn't get them to hit on anything. Were they eating though? Not really, seldom. Yeah. They were jumping. They weren't nothing. It wasn't like a prolific. There was event. like, there were two or three down the river a little bit. And I was, I actually brought my five weight out too, just to fucking throw my arm out. And I was like, it was one of those where you're casting into the wind just a little bit and uh -huh. it never failed. Like I waited for the calmest time to try and release. And every time it would make it like seven eighths of the way there. And then the fly would hit a wall yeah. and drop right next to the tip. I was like, God damn it. I cannot get this out there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That was happening. I went to Oak Woods one day last week and that, that was happening to me. I'd wait for the wind to die down and cast, and it, then it would pick right back up as I was releasing. Yeah. Just, Hitting a fucking brick wall. Speaking of casting, that kid at the show. Yeah, 11, 11 year old kid out of Standish. Just slinging any rod he picked up. Yeah. Two days of that. I don't know if I could do that. I mean, yeah maybe at like a full-size show and like that's all i was worried about but yeah. like like that guy was starting up his casting demonstration i was hoping it was going to be a kid yeah no i don't know i like maybe there's someone there that could use it and i don't want to like say that like i don't want to see novice stuff but also like if you have a kid like that in the building, I don't care what it takes. You just go get him and you're like, okay, we're going to demonstrate something together and they're going to watch you cast and I'll talk. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> I don't need to hear a fucking seven year old white guy tell me about fucking casting. Casting. I was just happy when I casted that three weight there that I didn't look like a complete idiot. That's always one of those that I get. He's like, yeah, go try it out. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll take it. But that's a pretty sweet setup they had for yeah. casting. 
normally it's like a zoo. Like there's a lot of people. The last time I've been down there, just yeah, just trying out rods and like I mean, like Sage wasn't there, G Loomis wasn't there, Coastal wasn't there. Now I gotta fucking figure out where to get glasses. God damn it. <laughs> they had some right at the shop. I know. Didn't have a big selection. No. I just like have you ever been to Ron John Surf Shop down in Cocoa Beach? No. So they are like a mile from the coast of dealer. So like if they don't have, and they have literally a 60 foot wall of coasters. And like, if they don't have the exact one you want, they call Costa and they have someone go get it. Like it's insane. And like, you can literally try on every frame, any glasses, any glass combination, any color combination. It's phenomenal. Yeah. And I bought three pairs of coasters from them. And I just want to do that again. <laughs> like I want to like walk into some place that has like a good selection. Not yeah. like yeah. even like Cabela's only has like four or five models. Yeah. And then you're screwed to whatever. Like if they have it in Tali, you're not going to be able to get it in glass unless you special order it. And then it's like, well, no, I want to be able to walk out with glasses. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I know what I want from an next one, so I'm just going to order them. I sort of do, and I think I might just order them because I have them. Like, I want to, because they just came out with the, I have the tuna alleys, but they came out with the pros, and I know I like the tuna alleys. <laughs> I just, mine are fucking 10 years old, and I've super glued them back together twice now. So, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Got more stuff to tie with. I didn't buy any tying material. I need to. I just didn't feel like spending money. I'll probably go there tomorrow. Get the day off. I'm going to try to fish in the morning. See how bad it's raining. Yeah, it's going to be gross until nine. Oh, yeah, nine o'clock. Heavy rain at two o'clock in the morning. Perfect. Water my grass. I got grass sprouting. Yeah. That's good. Fuck that guy. Home Depot told me I was going too early. <clears throat> um, so here's a, this was in the, um, where is it? The main fly fishing Facebook group. Yeah. So this is one of the guys that says, I'm the furthest thing from a pro. I still question if I'm doing it right. Although I've compiled a few lessons I've learned through errors. Fly fishing isn't a discipline that's meant to be rushed. We want to hop out of our vehicle and get to the water quickly. That's great. But when you get to the bank, you figure out you missed a guide building your double nymph rig and turned into 30 seconds now into 10 to 15 minutes to retie. <clears throat> um but basically like saying like get your take your time get your shit ready take your time break it all down you know don't just throw <clears throat> it in the truck yeah and like my comment was like i agree with you at some points like if it's water i've never fished before i will take my time yeah. i will not rush anything if i'm going any of the streams around here or even to the presumpt spot like i'm showing up ready to go basically and like that's where like I value a rod carrier, and like even like still like you can still have that time and take that time to tie on what fly you want or change a leader, but like at least your rod set up, you're ready to go. Yeah, <clears throat> and like that was my point. Like, just if I'm going somewhere new, I would definitely take the time to either. Even if I don't have to set up, like I'll sit and watch. Like I did that a bunch on yeah. Saturday. It was like, okay, I haven't really fished this section of water. Let me just sit here, kind of see what's going on, see where I want to try and cast, and see where I want to try and fish, and go from there. That's one thing I've started to start to do. Like I'll have my rod set up for when I get there, at least have a leader tied on. 
Yeah. And maybe a fly. But I like to watch the water. Just to see if anything's happening. <clears throat> in this fucking way. to be a true fly fisherman catching a fish is only mo a mere bonus no yeah maybe but after I've outfished everybody there <laughs> and I'm not I'm like and that's one of the things like I've never one of the reasons why I never got into like nymph fishing is like I don't want to try and catch that same brood fucking trout that's been sitting in the aquarium pool for six weeks having every fucking hook thrown at its fucking face yeah. like I would rather just go catch fish whether it's 15 inches or 20 inches, I don't really give a fuck. Yeah. I just want to catch fish. And they all getting released anyway. So I don't really give a fuck how big. I mean, like, obviously, catching big fish is fun as fuck. Absolutely. And catching different fish. Like the salmon I caught, I'll never forget. But like the rainbow I caught in up Maine, I'll, I will never forget that fish ever. <laughs> but it's like, there's days where it's like, okay. It's not just a mere bonus. Like my point there is to go catch fish. It's really to get ready to go catch bigger fish or harder fish or yeah. native fish. But oh, I'm still waiting on my truck to get back, so I can't really get too excited to plan any trips right now. Yeah. Hopefully soon. Any word on your truck? Ignorance is bliss. Just don't tell me to go. Just, just yeah. Just run it. I can't even run it. I found out fucking my goddamn bank puts a fifteen hundred dollar limit on my card. And it's gonna be more than fifteen hundred dollars. So she's gonna text me. I'm like I go to the bank and get cash and then go hand them a fucking stack. Gross. <laughs> But truck will be done. Truck will be safe. Truck will be ready for fucking attacking the North Main Woods. Yeah. I should be getting my new tires next week. New were tires to me. A little bit bigger. A little bit beefier. Ready to fucking go. Yeah. Watched a guy. I watched a YouTube video today guy that installed the diesel powered heater underneath the bed of his truck and then yeah. it had like the control port work. yeah come into the middle of the truck and he's like yeah i'm sweating like, was it mav yeah yeah i like his setup he almost set his truck on fire the first time he used a diesel heater oh really yeah yeah, he's got a pretty sweet set. Pretty nice. Yeah. Oh, we did see your Lord and Savior at the show. Oh, Bob Ballard. Yeah. Yeah. He's something. I don't really know what to. I've never seen someone want to make sure that his name badge was showing so yeah. that everyone knew. Who and he was just walking around. Like yeah. he wasn't even, like he's the director of this chapter of the native fish coalition mm -hmm. and which by the sounds of it because i did a little more digging after we had talked about him but they might get a lot more support if his ass wasn't there yeah there's a lot of people that don't like that man not a great spot to be in no and it's just because he's got a lot of like, you're very closed minded. Yeah. Been a nice way to put it. Allegedly. I haven't dealt with the man, but just seeing his mannerisms, I, I, I understand him. Yeah. Exactly. 
Yeah. Uh, we we'll got the. I did a little research on that casting for recovery. Yeah. Group that we saw. So they're based out of Montana. Yeah. And. They do stuff all over. Yeah. But it's for women, like taking women, yeah. breast cancer survivors, yep. fly fishing. Yeah. Which I thought was awesome. Yeah. There's, there's two really cool groups that I think that like deserve a lot more credit, which is that's one of them casting fear casting for a cure and then project healing waters yeah those guys those are awesome yeah <laughs> so those are two groups i definitely could i went to the casting for recovery's website they got a lot of cool stuff cool ways to donate you can straight up donate or you can buy stuff and the the proceeds go to that yeah but they had recycled fly line bracelets and shit which i thought were pretty cool i meant to tell you because you just took your line off your five way right yeah so i have it somewhere but fly vines look them up yeah so you can send it to them and they'll send you something back that's been made out of fly line oh that's cool or if you give it's like it's nominal it's like five or ten bucks yeah extra and they'll tie, they'll make you whatever you want of your fly line. So, like, I've got some three weight line here that I need to send to them. And what's the name of it? Fly vines. Fly vines. Yeah. That's who makes like all those, like the dog collars. Mm-hmm. They make keychain stuff. They make bracelets. I had one of their bracelets, but the line just fell apart on it after like three years of being in the sun. But yeah, they're based out of, I think, Montana. But yeah, they uh, they cool. you just donate to them, and then like if you want something back, you can just say yeah, just send me X, yeah, and they'll just send it to you. Or if you want something made from your fly line, you make whatever yeah. the contribution is, like five or ten or fifteen bucks, and then they'll make something out of your That's fly cool. line you send to them. Huh. It's pretty neat. Yeah, I'll have to do that. But good way to recycle. Good way to keep it out of the yeah out of the rivers. I just spooled it back up on the on the cassette. Yeah, but you're mine. Oh, you know where it is right now. I clean up in here, and I don't know where it is. I see a box of Rio. But... No, that's the new one. It's somewhere in that corner. I think. <laughs> oh, shit. I don't really have a lot of shit to talk about today. No. Nice little sh- surprise. Nice little short one. I don't yeah. Really have much. Oh, uh, shit. Want to get some more fishing in, get yeah. the truck back. Build my bed. Like, I sort of want to go all out and do, like, one of the really nice ones. And then I just also know myself. And I'm like, I'm just going to build the thing that's quickest and then just deal with it. Yeah. Like, it would be nice to, like, take the time and build a drawer system to, like, pull out or, like, underneath, like, slide out. Yeah. I'm just like... I get it done. It may not be that much harder to do it if you're already there. Yeah, but then it's like buying like small lumber and being precise. <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking like, all right, some two by fours, and a piece of plywood, and a camping mat, and a sleeping bag is all I fucking need. I know what I'm going to go with you. I'm probably just going to sleep in the cab of my truck. I did think about that too. Just get that because I found that inflatable bed system for like the back. I'll just recline the seat. Pass out. Although in all reality, I'll probably end up like if you go up somewhere on a Saturday, I'll come, drive up come Saturday up night after work or come up early Sunday morning. I'm excited. I'm excited for trips. 
Yeah. Just need the water to turn up a little bit. It's fucking cold right now. Let yeah. me tell you. Well, ice is still in a lot of the lakes. Yeah. But north. There's no so it's gonna be it's gonna be middle middle, middle of May. May. I mean they were getting snow. But if we go to Rangeley, you know, we could just camp in Aaron's driveway. Yeah. I just don't mind the D-Gen truck over there. Yeah. <clears throat> That's about all I got. That's all I got. Might let this process out here. Turn the heater back on. Go live on the old book face and tie up a couple. Tie up a couple flies. There you go out. Actually, I gotta go up to my shop too and get. <clears throat> I've got some wood duck in here, but I got more out there. <clears throat> you tie using some of the old ducks that were murdered. Uh, it irritates me so much that, like, I know I could donate. Like, I tell anyone that I know that ties, like, if you need mallard feathers or wood duck feathers, let me know. Yeah. I'll just give them to you. But, like, I'd love to be able to go down to the gym and be like, yeah, here's a fucking gallon trash bag, a gallon fucking Ziploc bag full of fucking wood duck feathers. But you could talk to him about donating some for the flies for kids, yeah. for people to tie for the flies for kids raffle. Use those of that. You gotta be careful though. Like they're they're very I don't want to bring any fucking I'd rather just give them to someone that ties. Yeah. Because, like, if there's any sort of money exchange, that yeah. whole fucking migratory bird tree act yeah. is fucking be up your ass fucking sideways. And that's the last thing I need to fucking. I'll have to find out what feathers I. I know they're mallard. I don't know if they're quill wings. I can't tell you. Because I have the recipe in my phone. Well, we should be getting everybody. We should have the whole band back together here in a fucking couple of days. Who's that? Fucking the old man and Chad should be oh, getting yeah. home. <clears throat> and Evan gets home. Natural duck quill. How's it look like? Uh, let's try it. Think about it. Oh, yeah, those are just wing feathers. Yeah, yeah. I just never tied anything where I needed it, so I didn't really have it. <clears throat> um, oh, May 11th, there is a May uh, Sebago Trout Unlimited is holding the second annual castaway for conservation at Thompson's Point. I might go to that. What is that? Um... Where did this go? Nope, not where I wanted to go. So, I'll read you the event thing. So, congratulations. You made it to another fishing season. Come celebrate with our Sebago chapter of Trout Unlimited in our second annual Castaway for Conservation event, taking place Wednesday, May 11th at Thompson's Point in Portland. Proceeds from the event will go to supporting Trout Unlimited Sebago chapter conservation programs. This is our main fundraising event of the year. 
<clears throat> curious about different fly rods, want to learn about casting techniques, want to learn about cold water conservation efforts happening in your backyard, enjoy some local food and beer, general merrymaking for the evening. New this year, Castaway Conservation will feature live music. Be sure to stick around to the end of the night as the event will include a silent auction and a raffle. It's a BYOC, bring event, bring your own chairs or blankets if you want. There will be a few picnic tables and benches for those not inclined towards self seating. <clears throat> I'd be down. Been up bad for work. 20 bucks. Or if you want a fire pit, it's 200. Jesus. But that includes five tickets. And That's a, pretty cool. And a dedicated fire ring for your group, as well as special extras, including a VIP meet and greet. <sighs> With who? I don't know. 16 and under is free, though. That's cool. So you're paying $100 for a fire ring, basically. Okay. <sighs> well, May 11th, that, that's the night we record, though. Want to record live from there? That would be a shit show. Yes, it would. We have enough time with fucking... We have enough trouble with fucking goddamn technology around here. Yeah, right. All right, folks. I think that's going to do it for tonight. Right about an hour. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad for a rescheduled Tuesday. This is true. We got uh, fishing with Aaron next Wednesday. So maybe just record with him and shoot the shit more. We'll just bring the laptop and fucking yeah. fire it up. A little tailgate fucking podcast. Podcast with some beers or something. Get some uh, athletic brewing. Yeah. I'll grab some of those. I'm gonna grab it in the bottle. I gotta go over there anyways. I can do that. And uh yeah. Well, folks, appreciate you hanging around and putting up with our idiocy. <laughs> we'll probably be more prepared next week, but probably not. That's an absolutely fucking blatant lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, we just talked about maybe doing it at the fucking tailgate. Oh, like truck. Yeah. Maybe we'll just do it out there. Maybe I'll just go live from the back of the boat and just. You can just drive me home. I could do that. That'd be a great idea. <laughs> That'd be my greatest idea ever. <laughs> yeah, Aaron, I've decided I'm not going to actually wet fly fish. I'm just going to get drunk. Okay. <laughs> I'd rather not catch a fish than I would fucking. Well, for me in the front of the boat, his oars aren't going to be touching the water. <laughs> Hopefully they're like fucking 10 footers or something. <laughs> You got some fucking counterweight or something. You got a plan for this because well, no offense, but you're gonna be in the back. I know. So. <laughs> good. If I go out though, we're fucked. Yeah. Or if I or if I jump, he's gonna go flying. Yeah. <laughs> like riding the bus, <laughs> fucking hitting the bumps. <laughs> All right, folks. We'll talk to you next week at some point. Yeah, it's fishing season. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe Friday. Fuck, I fucked if I know. We'll get back at you. Peace.